I stand before you today with a heart full of gratitude as we gather to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child here in the beautiful and green county of Kericho, whose slogan, all you can imagine, is just perfect for this celebration. I heard the girl say it is called the Green County also. And no wonder the rains. Kericho is always green. Before I continue, allow me to convey warm greetings from the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto. I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation for the invitation I received from the Chair of the Lake Region Economic Block Governor Anyang Nyongo and Kericho First Lady Betty Mutai to join the 14 member counties in the region in celebrating the girl child. I applaud your commitment to working together for the development of your counties and the well-being of your constituents. Let me take this opportunity to recognize, to recognize the recommendable work you are doing in providing equal opportunities for girls in the region since 2011. As we celebrate this day, I'm happy to know that you are utilizing this platform to address the triple threat of one, gender-based violence, two, HIV AIDS, and three, teenage pregnancies and menstrual hygiene health. This year's International, International Day of the Girl Child theme, invest in girls' rights, our leadership, our well-being, truly embodies the task at hand and serves as a global reminder for the rights of girls and the unique challenges they face around the world. Yesterday, I got the opportunity to catch up with your deliberations on Citizen TV. I listened to Vivian Chebet, a brave young girl who has also spoken to us today, who told her story of how she became a victim of the triple threat. Vivian represents the voice of many girls in our country. She and many like her are the reason we have gathered here to look for sustainable solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Center for Rights Education and Awareness Kenya reported over 3,762 cases of gender-based violence in 2022, with the majority of victims being women and girls. The violence took various forms, including physical, sexual, economic, and psychological abuse. A culture of tolerance for violence against women and girls at the community level perpetuates gender-based violence further. The World AIDS Day report of 2022 indicated an alarming increase in new HIV infections, with 70% of new infections occurring among women and girls in Kenya. Additionally, the Ministry of Health revealed that at least 98 girls aged 10 to 19 years were infected with HIV every week between the months of January and February of 2022. The Kenyan Demographic and Health Survey of 2022 indicates that 40% of girls aged between 10 to 19 years who have no education have been pregnant at least once. In comparison, only 5% of girls in the same age group with more than a secondary school education have been pregnant at least once. According to the United Nations Population Fund, Menstrual Hygiene Day reports dated 31st May 2023, highlighting data from our Ministry of Education shows that a girl is absent from school for four days every month, resulting in a loss of up to six weeks of academic year. This is due to lack of funds to purchase sanitary products. Lack of access to, sanit pro to sanitary products compounds the issue. Some of the girls will be disadvantaged further as they resort to unprotected sex so as to buy sanitary products, leading to early pregnancies, contracting of HIV AIDS, and in some cases, early marriage, resulting in an increase of the triple threat occurrences. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond this triple threat, 
our girls continue to face a number of other challenges that must also be addressed. The 2022 Kenya Demographic and Health Survey reports the prevalence of female genital mutilation, FGM, as 15% in our country, and child marriages persist at 23%. These are deeply troubling statistics that require our immediate attention and intervention. The resurgence of female genital mutilation is an outdated practice that families, communities, law enforcement agencies, and our courts must vigorously eradicate. We cannot allow such practices to persist in our society. Where families are stretched financially and unable to pay school fees, it is usually the girl who drops out of school, many opting for early marriages thereafter. This disadvantages the girl's father, leading to a cycle of poverty and limited opportunities. These statistics are deeply concerning and underscores the need for immediate action. Ladies and gentlemen, there is hope. We have witnessed significant progress in many areas, including access to education and health care for our girls. We have, been, we have seen initiatives like affirmative action, and the Women Enterprise Fund provide girls and women with improved access to opportunities, enabling them to take charge of their destinies. Women are increasingly taking their rightful place in decision-making platforms and government positions. We celebrate the remarkable journey of Honorable Cynthia Muge, the woman representative of Nandi County, who in 2017 became the youngest ever elected female member of the county assembly at the age of 24 years. Her story is an inspiration to the girls in the county and country at large who aspire to join politics. The government's 100% transition policy directive has also played a crucial role in increasing school enrollment for girls, ensuring that they have access to education and training. In 2022, nearly half of the KCPE candidates were girls, a clear indication that we are getting closer to achieving gender parity at the primary school level. I applaud the First Spouses Association of the Lake Region Economic Block Member Counties for their initiative dubbed WOMAN, that stands for Word of Mouth Advocacy Network, a program that advocates for the rights of the girl child by running menstrual hygiene education in schools, fighting the stigma of menstruation and policy sensitization. Ladies and gentlemen, the battle is far from over. We need to continue working together to create a safe environment for our girls without excluding our boys. This is very important because if we only focus on the girl, we shall be solving half the problem. The solution to tackling the triple threat is educating and empowering both girls and boys. I urge county assemblies represented here to consider legislative interventions that are allocate resources to combat the triple threat and thus supplementing the efforts of the national government. We must all come together to launch a spirited campaign that highlights the negative impact of teenage pregnancies, gender-based violence, and HIV and AIDS on our young people. We must also ensure that the triple threat victims get access to the much needed medical interventions. Together, we can create a future where our girls and boys are free to dream, thrive, and lead. May this International Day of the Girl Child inspire us all to work tirelessly for the betterment of our girls, our boys, and our communities. And with those few remarks, thank you for your kind attention, and may the good Lord bless you.